All right. So, at the time of Christ, the Jewish religion, they were not homogenous. They, they, there were different types of Jews. Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Zealots. The Pharisee group, you know, like in America, we got Republicans and Democrats and Independents, but they're all Americans. I don't know about the Democrats. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, they're all Americans, but they have very different ideas, don't they? And you got liberals and conservatives on the Supreme Court, and they interpret the Constitution very differently, don't they? Mm -hmm. So, in the same way, in the Jewish religion at the time of Jesus, they had people who were all Jewish, but they had some very, very different beliefs about what it meant to be a Jew. Uh, the Pharisees. They advocated strict observance of the law and separation from Gentiles. The Pharisees were the separated ones. They would not eat at a table with a... Oh, what's a Gentile? Claudia, what's a Gentile? You know? Anybody? A non-Jewish person. Okay, we got to get that <laughs> right away. A Gentile is a non-Jewish person. For the Jewish people at the time of Jesus, there were two groups in the world, us and them, okay? Jews and Gentiles. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile, okay? And the Pharisees, and in fact most Jews, did not think much of the Gentiles. They referred to themselves, we are the children of God. God has made a covenant with us, you know, God chose us. We are his chosen people. You, you do know about Abraham and Moses and, and God making a covenant with these, with these people. See, we are, we are God's chosen people. And you Gentiles, you're dogs. We, yeah, we're, you're dogs. Even Jesus used that term. Yeah, you might be, you know, scandalized. Like, what? Jesus called people? Yeah, he did. There was a Samaritan woman who came up to Jesus. She said, Jesus, my daughter is, is sick. She needs healing. And she was not a Jew. She was a Samaritan. She was a Gentile. And Jesus said, it's not right to take the bread from the children and give it to the dogs. Like, I'm not going to cure a Gentile. My healing powers are for the Jewish people. I'm not going to take the bread from the children, from the... Jewish people and give it to the dogs, you Gentiles. That's, that's how Jews thought. We're God's children, you're just dogs. And the Pharisees, they wouldn't eat with you, they wouldn't touch you, they wouldn't associate with you, they wouldn't talk to you. I mean, they, they were separated from, it was really ugly, okay? Now, back to Jesus and this Samaritan woman. She said, but master, even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the master's table. He said, you got faith, woman. It's done. Go home. Your, your daughter's cured. You know? But Jesus even used that common term, calling the Gentiles the dogs. <laughs> the Pharisees were nuts about... Uh, Keeping the letter of the law. We're going to see this over and over again as we go through the gospel. They were nuts about the letter of the law. You have got to follow exactly what it says. You know? And if you don't, you're a terrible sinner. And they're going to say that to Jesus over and over. One of the biggest rules they got is the uh, resting on the Sabbath day. You know? You, you cannot do any work on the Sabbath day. Uh, the Pharisees, they had it down to, I mean, you couldn't do it. They had it down to how many steps you could take on a Sabbath day. It was a little less than what we would call a mile. And they had it counted out into steps. And if you took more steps than that, you were going on a journey, and that's work, and you're a sinner. <laughs> and you had to wash before you ate your meals and stuff. You had to wash your hands. You had to, they had all kind of washing rituals. What does it mean to wash your hands? You know, how much water do you have to use? 
Well, they had it all laid out. You had to use at least half an eggshell of water. You hard boil an egg, you cut it in half, take the egg out, and now you got a half an eggshell, okay? And you had to use that much water. They live in a pretty dry area over there in Israel, and then you had to use that much water. And you had to wash with that much, and you had to rinse with another half an eggshell. And you knew you washed if, when you rinsed, you had to turn your hand down, and at least one drop of water had to fall from your pinky. And then you had to turn your hands up, and at least one drop of water had to fall from your elbow. And if you didn't use enough water to make that happen, you had to wash again because you didn't wash. <laughs> and if you didn't do it right, I mean, they would look at Jesus, Jesus, you didn't wash. Oh, you're a terrible man, Jesus. That's, that's the Pharisees. They're nuts. They had thousands. They had over 3,000 laws. There's 613 laws in the law of Moses, but they added more than 3,000 more. Yeah, crazy sauce. They wouldn't even take medicine on the Sabbath day because the medicine would work. <laughs> That's, you know, no working on the Sabbath day. Can't even take medicine on the Sabbath day because the medicine would work. So, the Pharisees are just exceedingly particular about doing exactly what the law of Moses says. And in their mindset, that's what makes you a good Jew. You follow the law. You keep the law. Okay? So, that's the Pharisees. The Sadducees. They are a small group of people. They're the wealthy priestly class. Uh, they mostly lived in Jerusalem. They ran the temple. Most of your chief priests and your high priests were from the Sadducee group. They were wealthy. They made a, they made a lot of money off the Jewish religion. Uh, they only believed in the first five books of the Bible. The first five books of the Bible are called the Law of Moses or the Torah. The Law. And this was given by God to Moses on Mount Sinai. This is what he brings that He brought down more than Ten Commandments, you know. He's got the two stone tablets. But he's up there for 40 days. And God had given him what we call today Genesis, Exodus. Can you give me the next three? Come on, Bible students. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. And starts with a D. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. All right. Woo. Boy, we need some Bible study around here. <laughs> the first five books of the Bible are called the Torah, the Law of Moses, or the Mosaic Law. And the Sadducees, that was their whole scripture. That was it. That's all they took as inspired by God. Well, there's a lot at the time of Jesus... There's 46 books in the Old Testament, okay? And they only believe five of them. Well, after those five, you got all the historical books, Joshua and Judges and Ruth and First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles and First and Second Samuel. You've, you've got all these, these historical books. And then you've got the wisdom books, you've got Psalms and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. And then you've got the prophets. You've got 12 minor prophets and four major prophets. There are 16 prophetic books. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and so on and so forth, right? They didn't take any of that as God's word. The Sadducees said, we only, we only listen to the first five books of the Bible. We only listen to Moses. That's it. And the Pharisees believed in angels. And they believed in the resurrection of the dead at the end of the world. The Sadducees did not believe in angels. They didn't think angels existed. They didn't believe in the resurrection. They thought you die, you rot, you're done, your life is over. That's it. There is no life after death. But the Pharisees thought that there was a life after death, that there was a resurrection at some point in the future that you'd be resurrected. So what do you think? Was Jesus more like the Pharisees than the Sadducees? Which one? Yeah, actually, he was more like the Pharisees than he was the Sadducees. And the Pharisees are nuts. 
Um, so Jesus is his own category. And the next one, you've got the Essenes. The Essenes, we think maybe John the Baptist was part of the Essenes. They lived down by the Dead Sea. John the Baptist and the Essenes lived down by the Dead Sea. It was kind of like, uh, you think of like a monastery out in the middle of nowhere. These were people who said, you Pharisees and you Sadducees, you're all too worldly. You're all crummy. If you really want to follow God, you leave the world and you go off and live by yourself and you spend your day prayer, fast. We still got people who do that. Monks and nuns, they go off, live in a monastery. They don't live in the rest of the world like we do, right? And they really totally dedicate their life to God. Many of them give up marriage. You know, they, that's the Essenes. And we think John the Baptist was part of that group. Said he lived in the desert and he ate locusts and wild honey. You know, not my idea of a fun diet. Um, the Zealots. They were terrorists. Okay? Now, when Jesus comes into the world, what political group is in charge of the Middle East? The Romans, the Roman Empire. They had conquered Judea uh, about a hundred years before Jesus. The Romans had conquered them. That area had been conquered. The Jewish people had been conquered over and over and over. Okay? We'll get to some of that maybe later. But at the time Jesus comes into the world, it's under the uh, domination of the Roman Empire. And so... Uh, those Jews living in Judea, and by the way, that's why we call them Jews, because they live in Judea. That's how they get the name Jews. All right? They are Israelites, and before they were called Israelites, because they lived in the land of Israel, before that they were called Hebrews, because they speak the Hebrew language. So the same bunch of people were called Hebrews for a long, long time. Then they were called Israelites for a long, long time. And then they were called Jews because they lived in Judea. There you go. You learned something today. I hope. And um, so the Jews living in Judea and in the rest of Israel, they hate Romans. They were conquered by the Romans. What if the Nazis had won World War II? Yeah, and we'd be living under a bunch of Heil Hitlers, you know. We wouldn't like that, would we? And the Romans would make you pay tribute or pay taxes to the Roman Empire. You think you'd like paying taxes to your enemy? No. And they hated that. And they hated being under their control. And, and the Romans had, hey... They conquered you. So there's, there's this, there's this uh, desire to overthrow them and to get their freedom. And that's the zealots. But the Romans had legions of soldiers, and they were the superpower of the time. And, and, and these poor Jewish people, oh man, these poor Jewish people, they, they don't have a chance to fight them in a big battle, right? So what do they do? They do what terrorists do. They, they wait around a corner at night, and when a Roman's walking home, they jump him and they stab him. They're, they're, they blow up something like the terrorists do. They, they can't, these, these Muslim terrorists, they can't take on the United States and our nuclear bombs and our jet planes and our tanks and everything. They got no chance that way. So they just blow up this and they kill that and they start this. That's what terrorists do. And that's what the zealots were do. They were revolutionaries. They wanted to overthrow. The only good Roman was a dead Roman. One of the 12 apostles was a zealot. One of the 12 apostles was a guy called Simon the Zealot. See, Jesus taught him that there's a better way. Conquer your enemies with love. Not with stabbing the dude. Now, 
from what you know of what I've said so far, and I don't know if you know the 12 apostles yet, but which two of the 12 apostles should have hated each other's guts? One would be Simon the Zealot, and which one would he hate? Maybe you just don't know. Did any of the twelve apostles work for the Romans? Paul? Judas. Paul is not one of the twelve apostles. No, not Judas. Matthew, whose name was also Levi, and he was a tax collector. He's collecting taxes for the Romans. He's a Jew who's working for the Romans. Simon the Zealot and Matthew... They, I, when they first met, I, I bet you Simon wanted to kill the dude. He hates the Romans, and you're a Jew, you're a sellout, you're working for them. What the heck are you doing? But Jesus changes people. Jesus changes people. And that's why you have let him, I'm assuming you have all let Jesus into your heart, and he's changing you every day. And he makes you a new creation. He makes you a new person. And so, after, you know, after they met Jesus, Matthew, he's a different person. Simon, the zealot, he's a different person. Now they're brothers. Okay? And so, what, what, before they met Jesus, they would have been literally killing each other. That's what Jesus does. He changes us. He totally changes us. Well, um, this is not nearly enough time. Uh, I guess you have a uh, meeting at 6.30 down the street. Give me that. It only takes two minutes to get there. So I get at least five more minutes. And, and uh, so you'll get there down there in time. Uh, what was the essence of the Roman religion? It was mechanistic and contractual. Performing sacred lights properly would ensure the desired result. Yeah. The Roman, they had gods for everything. Okay, you're, you're a soldier, you're going to go to war. You're going to make a sacrifice to... The God of war. And who is that? Mars. Mars was the god of war. And so you're going to go to the temple of Mars and you're going to make the, the sacrifice you're supposed to so that Mars helps you in battle. And they had gods for everything. They had gods for the kitchen, gods for the bedroom, gods for the farm, gods for the animals. They had gods for everything. And you just had to play your cards right, and the gods would be on your side. Now, if you don't, oh, the gods are displeased. You're going to get your butt kicked in the next battle. You know, Oh, the gods are angry with us. And this was their religion. This was not a very satisfying religion at all. And you've probably had some mythology in your earlier studies somewhere along the line. These gods were jealous, they were angry, they were lustful, they were... If you ever read the story of the Roman and the Greek gods and the Roman gods, the stories they had around them were just it's like soap operas. You know, it's just bad stuff. And so, the world was ripe for a whole new religion. I mean, the Roman religion was not a very satisfactory religion. There was, you didn't have a personal relationship with Venus, you know. Uh, it was just something, it was just, I do, the, I do the sacrifice and the gods do their part, you know. And when Jesus comes along, we find out that, you know, God has sent his only son because he loves us. And, and he's going to sacrifice his life. And he's going to call us into a covenant, into a relationship. And so this is a totally different type of uh, attitude toward religion. What was the Roman attitude toward other religions? Well, when the Romans conquered a country... They just absorbed that religion. If you worshipped, uh, you know, uh, 
kangaroos, okay, we'll just welcome your kangaroo worship into ours. They just added it to it. It's called syncretism. They just added everything. Oh, yeah, you can worship your God. We'll just put it. They had hundreds of gods. We'll just add your half dozen gods to our list. And, and it was all cool. That didn't work with Jews. The Jews said, your gods, are. there's only one God. That's the main thing about Jews. They're monotheist, and the Romans were polytheist. And so that didn't work so well. And then the Romans and the Jews didn't get along so well. But one thing the Roman Empire liked, they liked things that were old. And the Jewish religion was really old. It was like 1,500 years older than the, than the uh, Empire of Rome. And so they kind of let, they didn't totally let them alone, but they kind of let them alone just out of respect. Like, you have a very ancient religion, so we'll give you guys a pass. But everybody else, you got to worship the gods. Okay, and then when Christianity came along, well, that wasn't ancient; that was brand new. And the Christians said, "No, no, no! You, you guys, none of these gods are gods. This is totally stupid. There's one true God, Jesus of Nazareth, and He did miracles, and He died, and He resurrected, and we're His witnesses, and and we believe in Him, and that's it." And they said, "Hey, you you got to worship Caesar as God. You've got to worship the gods, or else you're not a good Roman." You're unpatriotic. You're a traitor. What do countries do with traitors? They kill them, right? They hang them. You're guilty of treason, they execute you. Well, that's what they started doing to the Christians for the first 300 years. Because we would not worship their gods. Okay? And so they were hell-bent to make us worship their gods. Well, I'm sorry. No can do. I'm a Christian. You kill me. I just go to heaven. Um, you know. So... That, that was a little bit of the situation, and we have run out of time. So, let's say a quick prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord, I thank you for each one of these souls here tonight, and I pray that you will pour out your Holy Spirit in their life, so that as they come to know you, Jesus, and love you, that they will become a new creation, and you will change them in every way for the better. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, you guys.